Hello and good morning, or let me say good Friday morning. I'm Pastor Jim Peterson with Christ Fellowship Church, and today we're in 2 Timothy chapter 4, verses 9 through 13. So if you have your Bible, let's turn there together. 2 Timothy 4, verses 9 through 13. And in verse 9, Paul says to young Timothy, do your best to come to me quickly. Why? Why does Paul say it like that? Well, let's remember the context. Paul is writing from a prison cell in Rome, likely a a dungeon of sort, and he's awaiting execution. Nero has already singled out the Apostle Paul as kind of the ringleader of Christianity, and so now he's going to, Nero is going to try to make an example out of the Apostle Paul. Paul's about ready to be martyred for Christ, about ready to be beheaded, and Paul realizes this. And we saw this in, in verse, uh, verse 6, Paul refers to his impending death as uh, departure. So it's going to happen quickly. So Paul is saying to Timothy, you come quickly. And remember, in the first century, correspondence and, and travel took quite a bit longer. And so Timothy would probably get this letter and it would take him a couple months to travel from Ephesus to Rome. And so Paul says, come on, get over here. And then verse 10, for Demas, because he loved this world, has deserted me and has gone to Thessalonica. Crescens has gone to Galatia, and Titus to Dalmatia. Now, Paul is basically giving Timothy an update. You got one guy because he loved this world, Demas. Likely he didn't want to bear up under the suffering of the gospel. He didn't want to be with the Apostle Paul, be targeted like the Apostle Paul was. And so he left, he's out. He loved this world. Not so with these other ones, not so with, with Christians and Titus. No, they, they left on mission. They left on good terms. And then Paul says in verse 11, only Luke is with me. And it's interesting because, uh, it, again, Paul is, is giving an, uh, an update for Timothy. He's not saying that, that uh, only Luke is the only one who stood with me. No, he's just saying, hey, Luke is, Luke is the guy that's with me now. And this is the same Luke from the Gospel of Luke. This is the same Luke who God used to write the book of Acts. And this is the same Luke who's a physician. This is interesting because some commentators suggest that the reason that Luke was there was with the the Apostle Paul and likely as a visitor, he was was able to enter in as a a visitor and attend to the needs of the Apostle Paul while he was in uh, this Roman dungeon, this prison cell. And, and commentators suggest that why Luke was there is because he was helping treat the Apostle Paul. It's possible because of Paul's weakness. Paul referred to this thorn in his, in, in his flesh, and we didn't know if that was epilepsy or some kind of malaria. We don't, we don't know exactly what it was, but it's possible that Luke that w- was, with there, was with the Apostle Paul at this moment as the attending physician. And then uh, Paul continues, he says, get Mark and bring him with you because he is helpful to me in my ministry. And this is interesting. And it, it kind of really reveals the full circle because this is the same Mark, John Mark of Acts chapter 15. This is the same one that uh, where the apostle Paul and Barnabas had a sharp dispute over. And if you look at Acts chapter 15, Barnabas and Paul were in absolute disagreement as to whether or not they should take this John Mark with them because he had demonstrated, he kind of left mission abruptly. He he didn't serve well and and he kind of deserted earlier on on a mission. And and Barnabas said, hey, he's forgiven and, and he's helped and let's take him with us. And Paul said, no, this guy must have character problems and, uh, and so now, though, we see this is the same Mark that's now helping the Apostle Paul. And that's why Paul says, hey, bring, bring him as well. Bring Mark with you because he's, he is very helpful to me in my ministry. And I love that because it shows God's incredible uh, power in, in the, the life of, of Mark. And so there had been a change in his own heart and his own character and his own life. And Paul recognized that, and certainly Paul had forgiven. Uh, and, and so now uh, he's being encouraged to come with. And then in verse 12, he says, I sent Tychicus to Ephesus. And when you come, bring the cloak that I left with Carpus at Troas and my scrolls, especially the parchments. And why I, I think this, uh, what this verse does for me is, I look, well, as I look at verses 12 and 13, and really this whole section, is I'm reminded of just the humanness of the Apostle Paul, that Paul, 
uh, as a limited human being, just like you and me. And so these are, these are de- details of his life that need to be sorted out. And, and it's true for, for all of us. And so Paul here, really, on, with death around the corner, is sorting out some of these details. And, and so what we want to do uh, right now as we pray, we recognize that, that our lives have all sorts of details to be sorted out. But in the center of it all is our Lord and our Savior, Jesus. And so we fix our eyes on him. We focus on him. We live in, with, and through him. All right, let's go to a time of prayer. And let's remember to pray for Christ Fellowship Church. We are excited about the 24th. We're going to be reopening the church. We have two services, 9 and 11. And things are uh, moving well in terms of our preparation for that. But we really do need to pray. We need to pray that this would be a great time of the Holy Spirit. And so the other thing I'll I'll mention is that today we are encouraging any and all who will join with us in a fast. Leadership is going to be fasting a food fast until 5 p.m. this afternoon. And and certainly we're, you know, we don't need to know who's in with us. We just want to encourage us as you feel so led in the Lord to fast with us. And as we're doing so as a cry out to the living God that he will oversee this reopening, that he will hold all of Christ's fellowship in his hands and he'll protect us and and those that aren't able to come because they're susceptible we want to have them as well just be held in the arms of the lord and and taken care of and so we really need to be praying for christ fellowship church also i got a prayer request from sally williams today and that's to uh doug and sally williams um they have asked for prayer and and sally in particular with her sister julie who's apparently going to be coming to live with Doug and Sally. And, and also she is on dialysis, and so she's not in the best of, of shape and, and in great need. And from what I understand, uh, Julie doesn't have a relationship with Christ, or she did, uh, it was long ago, she might be, she's going through some stuff. And so we want to pray that uh, God would use Doug and Sally for that. And also she, the, her sister Julie needs to sell a home, as well as Doug and Sally need to sell a home. They have a home in Florida that has got to sell. And I know there are many needs like that in Christ Fellowship Church, but we're going to pay attention to those needs this morning and lift them up before the Lord. So let's pray. Lord, we thank you for your presence today. We thank you for your word. Lord, we thank you that uh, we see the Apostle Paul, a mere human being, that you use so effectively and powerfully, Lord. And we would like to be used like him. And God, we would like to have the same outlook that Paul had as he approached his ending day. Uh, Lord, help us to have that same faith and resolve and focus on you, Jesus. And Lord, we trust that you will carry us through this. Lord, we pray for Christ Fellowship Church, God, that you'd be with us in this reopening and especially be with those that are not able to come and be a part of this, Lord, physically, that, Lord, that you would prompt them in prayer and that you would encourage them when we pray for all of Christ Fellowship Church, Lord, that you'll keep us, keep us away from the coronavirus, Lord, protect us, Lord, all the days of our lives and do something special with our church, Lord, as I've been praying that, Lord, that you would use Christ Fellowship Church as a place that would be your kill zone by the power of your blood, Lord, that the coronavirus could not live as we put our attention upon you and it would be put to death uh, by all uh, as, with their attention upon you, Father. And then, Lord, we want to pray for Doug and Sally and uh, Sally's sister, Julie, Lord, that you would attend to this whole happening, God. We pray that you'd reach Julie. If she does not have a relationship with you, God, use Doug and Sally in their love for you and love for her. God, we pray that uh, you would show yourself to her. We also ask for two homes to sell, Lord. They need to be sold. Julie's home needs to be sold, and then also Doug and Sally with their their home in Florida really needs to sell, Lord, and their lives are given to you, everything, Lord. So we pray that you would just sell this house, Lord. We ask in the name of Jesus Christ. Again, we thank you for this day, and we all say amen. Amen.